Is Arizona a crash proof real estate market? I had a friend reach out to me and ask that after they saw this article in CNBC here. These are the 10 states with America's most stable housing markets. Now, obviously, real estate is very location-based. You know, I have a team in Peoria, Illinois, and also in Phoenix, live in the Phoenix market. So what happens in Phoenix is greatly different than what happens in Peoria, Illinois. But according to CNBC and what they looked at, Arizona ranked number eight in the most stable housing markets in the US. And what they're looking at is, you know, new construction booming, um, you know, rising foreclosures as a potential for concern, but home equity is solid. So obviously I think it's a little bit of a clickbait title on this article. Well, I don't say clickbait, but I don't know, how can they really know if it's going to be the most stable, especially when this information came out to where we are now in some of these, you know, these lagging indicators. But what I'm gonna go over today is talking about the market, what we're seeing in real life numbers, boots on the ground, and why? Well, I kind of tend to agree that it is a pretty stable market, even as crazy and as shifting as this market is compared to other parts of the country. Inventory is rising. Now, Phoenix at one point led appreciation year over year, you know, for like 30 months straight. Uh, now they're number four, they might be hitting down to number five, but what they are leading is <laughs> new inventory hitting the market. A lot of the numbers I look at are just single family detached. I don't look at manufactured or, you know, uh, apartment or condos, town, that kind of thing but I'll, I'll mix it in on this one. But we went from having, you know, at a low in the 2000 of single family homes for sale, you know, 2,500, give or take. And we're hanging around the 3,000 to 5,000 homes for the most part. And as I track these numbers daily, I see it climbing and climbing and climbing. And I let my clients know and what to be prepared for. Well, now that number of single family detached, just active, not counting under contract with backups, but it's over. 15,000. Now, when we look at the Cromford report, you know, just active listings, and they're talking about with under contract with backup offers submitted, you know, you're at uh, 21,283. I don't, I don't look at those necessarily because they're not really there for you to buy, but just active listings, excluding the under contract, under contract, accepting backups. And this is all property, single family, detached and attached, um, you know, modular homes. You're at 18,491. And that number is increasing quite a bit. It's up over 3,000 for where it was last month. And this time last year, that number was 7,200. But what does all this mean? You know, the CNBC says it's the most stable market. Well, how can it be so stable when we're seeing, you know, these numbers? And as you look at, you know, time and time again, you know, sales are down, you know, year over year from where they were, you know, last year and the year before. Uh, days on market is increasing. Uh, expired listings are increasing. Price changes in the last week here, over 4,000 price changes. Now, I'm not gonna, they don't say price reductions, but most people here are not raising their price. You know, when the rate increased, uh, you know, what, two months ago, give or take, uh, that put a lot of people into fear position. Now, thankfully, when the Fed did the latest hike, rates did not go up uh, when it comes to mortgages, so that is a good thing. But a lot of people do have that fear, that uncertainty, the unknown uh, on buyer end, and then also sellers. We're seeing a lot of sellers get their home just wondering, did I miss my opportunity? Did I miss my window? I mean, the average right now is 543 and the median is 450. Now those are down from the month prior and the year prior, but most likely those homes that people bought for 450, well, well they didn't buy them for 450. Most likely those homes that are uh, sold for 450, that owner probably paid, you know, half that, give or take, depending on, you know, when they bought and resold, but at least that's what I'm saying with my clients who bought, you know, you know, four or five years ago, give or take, they are selling that for, you know, almost double from what they paid back then. So yes, we are seeing an increase in the inventory. Rates are a little bit higher than they were, well, double what they were, but why? do I think it is gonna remain a stable market? And I know some of you push back on this idea, but 
the amount of people moving here. You know, maybe it's not 250 people per day at the moment, but the amount of businesses moving here. So on Phoenix Business Journal, you know, the article uh, headline here is Phoenix Metro sees a bump in international companies looking to move to Arizona. You now, if you're not here, if you're not paying attention, you may not see or be aware of all of the companies looking to relocate here or put boots on the ground and invest their money here. One of the biggest ones is uh, the Taiwanese semiconductor plant going right here in Phoenix Metro, creating a ton of jobs, investing in the billions. So as you can see here in this article, tons of tons of companies coming here, tons of relationships with Canada, Taiwan. Um, and as we look toward uh, you know the companies that are already here, over 5,400 foreign businesses are here employing over 125 employees in the Phoenix region. So that's huge. When you have the company and the economic you know, strength that you have in Phoenix Metro, that is gonna help your market. The one thing though I do worry about is you know, if those prices would have continued to increase. You know, I, Personally, I like seeing you know a little bit more of a reality check because a lot of the first-time home buyers or people maybe on a fixed uh, income where they could have bought that home for two hundred fifty thousand dollars and now it's you know four fifty years later. You know I do feel for those folks, and we're not going to see that type of you know price dropping and you know value loss there. But we're not going to see that thirty-eight percent year-over-year growth that we did because there had to be a ceiling and. You know, thankfully, I think people are getting used to that now. And it's really nice for buyers who are looking to move here, buy a home, that you do have, you have some power now. You have incentives, you have you know, some options when it comes to negotiating. And I know if you're worried about the high rate, so a lot of times with my clients, when we're putting in an offer, we're asking for you know, incentive, we're buying down that rate to at least get them to where they're more comfortable where their monthly payment is. And sellers, you also have to understand this is not six months ago and agents you as well you have to have those conversations with the sellers to let them know this is what reality is now i think a lot of people they just got you know their head too big and they wanted you know 30 offers well above what everything close to what it was worth but now you know, your home the equity in it is still most likely far greater than it is from what you purchased and you just have to determine, you know, why are you selling your home or why are you buying that home? But just with the economy outlook, the job outlook, we're gonna see, you know, that strength remain here in the Phoenix market. Percent of homes sold above list price. Now, a lot of people coming here uh, months ago understood to compete, they had to purchase most likely above list price. I did have clients that, um, they crushed it, we got it for a great price. They did not have to go over list, but most did. Over 60% at one point were going above list price. Well, that number is dropping and it's continuing to drop. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, as the months go on, where the percent of homes sold fall in relation to going above list price. So I know I mentioned about price per square foot. It's up from a year ago, but it is falling from the month prior. Where well, here is your crazy stat for the day, the highest price per square foot was May of 2022, $306. And I'm talking sold, not just listed. And that was a record high. Now the record low was $78 price per square foot sold. And that was in September of 2011. If only we had a crystal ball back then, we'd all be sitting pretty and you would not be talking to me most likely. For right now, the Phoenix market remains strong. Things are changing, it's getting Definitely closer to that balanced market. However, we're still you know, listing short from where we need to be typically on average, but in some areas we're seeing it balanced already and some are almost there and I anticipate that to happen you know, sooner than later. So buyers out there who are looking to get into a home but did not want to compete, now may be the time for you to take action and take that buyer or that seller concession, buy it on your rate, get into your home. We'll see what this market does. If you have any questions, uh, you are ready to make the move, take the next step, reach out. And even if you're not, you're you know, a year or two away, my contact information is below and anything I can do to help you buy, sell here in Phoenix Metro, I'd love to do so. Rich Brecklin, Real Broker AZ, Arizona Life. I'll see you on the next one.